All right, so in this video, we're going to take a photo and we're going to make it seem as though it's done in a old classic 1950s style pinup poster. If you ever seen those kind, it's got the really kind of art, art kind of an almost painted look to it. Really, really, really old fashioned. And here's a quick way to do that to a photograph. So the first thing I need to do is actually I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer just so we don't really alter our original pixels, just in case we need to go back to the original for any reason. So, on that duplicate, first thing I'm going to do is actually go under the filter menu. We're going to go to Blur and to Surface Blur. What this will do is remove a lot of the detail, but keeping our edges pretty much intact. And you can see right there in my preview, smoothing out that image pretty good. So, I'm just going to leave my radius at 5 and threshold at 10. Let's hit OK. I'm going to double click my magnify tool just so we can zoom in here a little bit, kind of get a better idea what's going on. So if I command Z and undo that, you can see it's removed a great deal of that detail. But not all of it. You can see on the lips here, it's still little sharp areas. And of course, our hair, we need to smooth that out quite a bit. So to do that, I'm going to go over here and get my smudge tool. I want to make sure that my setting is very, very low. In fact, this, in this case, I want my setting, the strength, to be about 4%, which is fine. I'm going to leave the mode to normal. Now, I'm going to size my brush up. I'm using my bracket key and size that brush up a little bit. Make it a little bit softer. Hold down the shift key and left bracket and make that brush a little bit softer. So starting inside the hair, I'm going to make sure that my brush settings don't bring up my brush options here. I'm going to make sure that none of these items are checked. So we're just getting a regular brush behavior there. I'm just going to start painting in our hair with that smudge tool. Now what I'm doing is, is going with the direction of the hair. And that's why I'm using a smudge tool because it's almost as if I'm blurring in, it, almost like you do like a directional blur on a brush in a sense. So it's this very low setting. I can really just kind of remove that detail in her hair. And it, you can see it kind of leaves me with almost like a painted uh, effect to it, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just going to keep brushing into her hair here. Some areas I, can, I don't have to go with the direction of the hair if I want to get that much more detail removed. So right in this area here, if I go at a little bit of an angle, a little bit more detail is taken out. And of course, we'll just go in here and continue to really brush out a fair amount of that detail. Let's go right through here. Now for the, the sake of demonstration and time, I am certainly going you know a lot faster on this, but if you were doing this as a finished piece, you'd probably want to spend just a little bit more time with it, depending on the nature of your image. So let's do that. All right. So that'll be it for the hair. Now let's move on. Let's go to her lips here. In fact, I'm going to zoom in and there just a little bit. Back with my smudge tool, I'm going to make a much smaller brush and going just slightly with the direction of that glare, just kind of brush out some detail. Could go side to side just a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a painted edge kind of look there. There, that's not too much, just a little bit. Maybe it'll smooth out the teeth in there just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to zoom out now. So we've smoothed out all that detail. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer. And then I'm going to change that layer's blending mode to overlay. And that will in really increase the saturation of those colors a little bit there. Now I'm going to load the luminosity of this image as a selection by pressing Option Command, then the Tilde key, which is that little wavy line on the image. Then I'm going to invert this selection by pressing Shift Command I, and that will invert it. Then I'm going to copy that selected area of this layer to its own layer by pressing Command J, just like that. Now, this particular layer that's got that area selected on there, I'm going to change its blending mode to Vivid Light and that will increase that area a little bit more, but it's isolated it only to those areas that I've copied to the layer. So it's not doing it quite as harsh. Now, I'm going to load, load that layer as a selection, and then I'm going to create a new layer on top of that one. And this time I'm going to fill that selection with white. And then I'm going to deselect that. Then I'm going to change this layer's blending mode to soft light. So you can see, you can see that blending modes are playing a huge part in achieving this effect. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You can already start to see we're getting a pretty convincing look already. But we're not quite there yet. Now, 
I'm going to merge all these layers together, but I want them to be the merge to be on its own layer. I don't want to flatten this image yet, but I want to get all of these onto its own layer because I have the I need that for the next effect I'm going to apply. So I'm going to hold down the Option key, Alt on the PC, and go into my layer menu here, and we're going to go to Merge Visible. But holding down that Option key will actually put a merge copy on its own layer, as you see right there in the Layers palette. Now I'm going to get my let's zoom out of here a little bit. I'm going to get my eyedropper tool right here, and I want to select this. Do you see this red color inside her palm? It's really the only area I found in the image that has this kind of tone, this skin tone on it. I'm just going to sample that color, and you see that red right there. I'm going to leave background, the background color is white, because the filter I'm going to apply will use those two colors. So with that active layer, go under Filter, go to Sketch, and we're going to go to Photocopy. And we're going to get this big window here. It might go all the way off screen, so you can't really see it, but you can see... I'm going to leave the detail and the darkness settings to 5 each. And you can see it's using that foreground and background color to kind of give me, you know, an outline look. You know, just kind of fill in those really dark highlighted or dark shadowy areas. So I'll hit OK. Then I'm going to change that layer's blending mode to multiply. Now it's a subtle change, but if I turn it on and off, you can see it's giving me a little bit more detail in there. So that's very important. Now... I want to enhance the makeup on her face just a little bit, so I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to sample that color on her face. Actually, let's sample this, this red again. I'm going to change this layer's blending mode to color. Let's go get a brush. Let's get a really soft brush, but not quite that big. And I'm just going to touch in on her cheeks here a little bit. And I'm not worried about how saturated it looks, because I can mess up, uh, adjust the opacity on that one. So I got her cheeks. Let's uh, enhance that eye makeup a little bit. Let's, let's get a little, little bit of a blue color here. Make that brush a little bit smaller. Let's just brush that in. Yep, we're definitely going to have to drop that opacity, aren't we? So let's go over here and let's use the scrubby slider and just drop that opacity down quite a bit. So it's enhancing it, but not too much. Don't want to make it a little too much there. So that looks pretty good. So now... I'm going to create a new layer on top of that. I'm going to fill that layer with 50% gray, pressing Shift-Delete, and get my Fill dialog here, 50% gray. I'm going to go under Filter, and we're going to go to Texture, to Grain. We want to give it kind of a little grainy look. And these settings are already applied from my last time, but here you can hit, see I have Intensity set to 40, the Contrast to 15, and I'm using the Enlarged Grain type right here. So, with all those settings in place, I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it's applied that texture. Now, of course, the resolution of your image will certainly determine how much of this grain will be applied. So you'll have to experiment with it a little bit, which is, what I, which is what I had to do to achieve those settings here. Now, the noise you see is in color. It's got some color variations going on there. I don't really want that in color, so I'm going to remove that color information by pressing Shift-Command-U. Con, Shift then, simply change that layer's blending mode to Overlay. So if I zoom in here a little bit, if I turn that noise layer on and off, you can see it kind of gives me a really grainy, kind of aged look to it. And that pretty much completes the effect. I mean, there it is. It's a pinup girl effect. But when I got to this point, I'm thinking, well, I could take it a step further. Because a lot of the pinup girl posters, um, you see them on really old aged paper or kind of a yellowish or, you know, kind of an aged background. So let's do what we did a while ago merge all these layers onto their own layer. So holding down that Option or Alt key, let's go into that layer menu, go to Merge Visible, and then we'll drop it on its own layer. Then I'm going to create a new layer right beneath that one by holding down my Command key, clicking on the new layer icon. And let's go into our color picker and let's get, you know, just a kind of an old yellowish look. Something like that. And of course I can change this after the fact. I mean, like, again, this will come into some experimentation. And it doesn't have to be yellow. I mean, you can certainly try all kinds of different old-fashioned colored backgrounds. So I'll hit OK. I'm going to fill that layer in there. Then I'm going to go back to this merge layer and simply change its blending mode to multiply. And there you can see we've got that pinup girl effect, but now it's up, up against the color, which kind of gives it a faded, aged look to it. So in just a few short steps, we've gone from this simple photograph 
to this pinup girl effect. In just a few layers, a few blending modes, a few simple techniques, you can have your own pinup girl effect on virtually any photograph.